Welcome to Library Seminars, a platform for the presentation of ideas, research, and news in support of NOAA's mission. I'm Lisa Clark, reference librarian at the NOAA Central Library. I'm excited about today's seminar, Explore U.S. Marine Ecosystems in the Nation at a Glance with NOAA's new National Marine Ecosystem Status web portal. This presentation is part of the Ecosystem-Based Management, Ecosystem-Based Fisheries Management Seminar Series, which is developed by NOAA Fisheries Office of Science and Technology. Peg Brady from that office will introduce our speaker, Ellen Spooner. Before we begin, um, here are a few logistical tips to help you enjoy our presentation. If you're having trouble with the audio or visual components of GoToWebinar, please log out and rejoin us. This usually resolves most technical issues. This presentation is being recorded and will be available on the NOAA Central Library YouTube channel, as well as the Library Seminars website later today. We will also be accepting questions throughout the webinar, which Ellen will address at the end of her presentation. I encourage you to type your questions into the questions chat box on the right side of your screen at any time. So with that, I thank you for attending this library seminar and turn the presentation over to Peg. Thanks, Lisa. <clears throat> Greetings, everyone. This is Peg Brady from NOAA Fisheries Headquarters, Office of Science and Technology. Um, today, uh, the December seminar, seminar series is the last of our 2020 EBM EBFM seminar series, which we initiated back in November of 2017. And our main objectives for this seminar series has always been uh, to showcase the excellent projects that are being implemented by NOAA Fisheries, as well as our partners around the country to advance ecosystem-based management and to increase awareness regarding the focus of EBFM um, on undertaking and better understanding marine ecosystems, and to uh, offer an opportunity for our NOAA fishery staff to highlight their work. NOAA Library has been a great co-host of this series, um, and the seminars are held on the second Wednesday of each month from 3 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. And as Lisa pointed out, these are publicly accessible, recorded, and archived thanks to the library. And the past recordings are always available. Um, you can get them through our site. And we really encourage you all to share these with colleagues who may not be able to join us today to hear Ellen or um, uh, would be interested in some of our past presentations. And I want to thank our speakers and all those who, folks who have joined the series over the month, last couple of months and also for their recommendations for our future speakers. So as Lisa announced, we have Ellen Spooner, who is our communication specialist in the NOAA Integrated Ecosystem Assessment Program in the Office of Science and Technology. We're uh, thankful to have Ellen on our, our team, who's been advancing both the IEA program and now is going to talk about <clears throat> her recent work and collaboration with a number of our folks around NOAA Fisheries, uh, which is the new um, national, excuse me, uh, the new National Marine Ecosystem Status Web Portal. So. I'm going to turn this over to you, Ellen, and glad to see you. And um, thanks very much for volunteering and joining us today. Yeah, thanks so much, Peg. And thank you all for tuning in today. I know it's a lot of different things grabbing your attention these days. So I really appreciate your time and I'm excited to be with you. Um, so as Peg mentioned, my name is Ellen Spooner. I am the communication specialist for NOAA's Integrated Ecosystem Assessment Program and also the Executive Secretary for the Ecosystem Indicator Working Group, which is a working group of the NOAA Research Council and the group responsible for developing this new web portal that I'm going to show you guys. So I am going to give you the three key takeaways right up front because it feels like these days we spend most of our lives staring at screens and it's easy to get distracted. So the National Marine Ecosystem Status Portal provides the status at a glance of seven regional marine ecosystems across the U.S. and the nation. So this web portal is really meant to be a starting point for users. It also provides access to existing NOAA sites that are currently serving ecosystem data for users who are interested in a deeper dive and want to access the variety of ecosystem data that NOAA puts out. Um, and my third takeaway is to please check out the site. Um, it, we just launched it about a month ago, so it's definitely a living site. We welcome your feedback for improvements or comments how the site was useful to you. Please send your comments to nymphs.eiwg at noaa.gov. 
and the site URL is ecowatch.noaa.gov. So why did the working group create this site? Well, NOAA monitors a wide range of ecosystem data from chlorophyll to sea level to commercial fishing revenue. But if you're not familiar with NOAA or the programs within it, it can sometimes be difficult to find that information. For example, if you did a simple Google search of chlorophyll and NOAA, you get over 600,000 results in a variety of different NOAA sites. So it can be hard for users to figure out where to get the data that they're looking for. Similarly, NOAA has a variety of really awesome programs that put out um, different variations on ecosystem status reports. This week, you may be familiar, the Arctic program just released the 2020 Arctic status or Arctic report card. Um, also, the Coral Reef program for the first time this year put out a national status of the Atlantic and Pacific coral reefs. Uh, the program that I work for, the Integrated Ecosystem Assessment Program, puts out ecosystem status reports for a variety of different regional and resource managers. And also the Office of National Marine Sanctuaries puts out condition reports. And so all of these different reports sometimes can be difficult to find the information that you're looking for and, and know where to get it. So about three years ago, Jason Link, who is the senior ecosystem scientist within NOAA, put together this working group of the now science, but the formerly research council. Uh, within this working group, there are social scientists, oceanographers, educators, and communication specialists, such as myself, all from each of the line offices. So this effort was truly a, a one NOAA effort. And when they started to think of how to develop such a web-based platform and really help promote all of the variety of ecosystem efforts across the agency, they first put together a list of all the ecosystem indicators that NOAA monitors. And then they compared that list of indicators to a set of criteria that you can see on the table here. So are those indicators available in most of the regions across the US? Are the indicators quantitative? Are they updated on a regular basis? And do they have a long-term time series, preferably longer than 10 years, among a couple other criteria? So if the indicators met these criteria, then they were selected to be on the site. So now I get to take you to the portal, which I am very excited to show you. And let me just switch over there real quick. All right, so hopefully now what you're seeing is the homepage of the National Marine Ecosystem Status site. So as you can see, you can access the data through a variety of different ways. You can access by region, by theme, or unique to this site, you can access the national status where they've aggregated uh, ecosystem data to see how that indicator is doing across the US. And also importantly, you can access more resources, which provides links to all of the existing NOAA sites that serve ecosystem data. So let's dig into it. For example, if you want to find an indicator by theme, you can either choose from this drop-down menu here, or you can click on View All. If you click on View All, what will show up is this stylized ecosystem that displays all of the indicators that are available on this site. As you can see, they're grouped biologically, by climate and physical indicators, and by human dimensions. Working for NOAA's Integrated Ecosystem Assessment Program for almost three years now, I've become acutely aware of the importance of incorporating human dimensions or human needs and activities into the decision-making process. So some of the human dimensions indicators that are displayed on the site are some of my favorite. So let's take a look at billion dollar disasters, for example. When you click on one of the indicator pages, what you'll see is a time series and a gauge for each of the seven regions that are displayed on this site. So for example, if we click on Gulf of Mexico, what you'll see is a time series of the number of weather and climate related disasters that exceeded a billion dollars each year. So you can kind of get a feel for what the trend is in this region over time. And then also the gauge on the right hand side is meant to give a snapshot of the current status of how that indicator is doing in that region. 
The way that the gauge is displayed is it takes the average of the last five years, which you can see here in green, and compares that to each data point across the entire time series. So as you can see in the Gulf of Mexico, the number of billion dollar disasters is far to the right because the average over the last five years has been above uh, the previous number of disasters. So also on this page, you'll see a description of the time series, a description of the gauge that I just shared with you guys, a description of the indicator in case you're unfamiliar with it, and also very importantly, uh, source access to the data that was used to create the time series and the gauge. So this data came from the National Center for Environmental Information. But let's say you're not interested in a theme, instead you want to explore the data by region. You can also view each of the regions from the drop-down menu, or you can click on View All. So if you click on View All, you'll get this interactive map, and let's say you're interested in the Gulf of Mexico large marine ecosystem. What you see when you click on one of the regional pages is all the indicators grouped by theme for that region. So we have the climatological, physical and chemical, biological, and human dimensions. And if I scroll down to the billion dollar disaster indicator that I showed you under the thematic page, you can see it's the same time series and gauge just displayed by region. And this allows you to compare indicators a variety of different indicators across one region, or if you choose by theme, you can compare the same indicator across different regions. And another key aspect of this portal is this resources section. There's a resources section that's at the bottom of each of the regional and thematic pages that provides you access to all the NOAA sites that provide ecosystem data relevant to that region or that theme. So you can see here, we provide a link to the Gulf of Mexico Ecosystem Status Report, to the Flower Garden Banks National Marine Sanctuary Condition Report, the Coral Reef Program, and a variety of other programs. I also want to show you what's on the national page. So the national page provides information that's aggregated across the U.S. Similarly, the indicators are grouped climatologically, physical and chemical, biological and human dimensions. And so I'll show you as an example, my one of my favorite indicators is the, the billion dollar disaster indicator. So here you can see the average, the number of billion dollar disasters across the US. So you can see the time series and the gauge here as well. And that's unique to this site. And then, as I mentioned earlier, the More Resources tab allows you to access a variety of the different ecosystem services and resources that uh, NOAA provides. So now I will transition back to my presentation. And we'll go here. So the site was launched about a month ago, and since then, we have received a, a lot of feedback, which is really great. We also received feedback while we were in the development of the site from in, internal uh, users and external users. Some of the feedback that we received was this is a great step towards bringing a lot of different data together. Um, we also received feedback of users becoming aware of data sets that they didn't even know existed before, or weren't familiar with how to find it, which is really great because that was, again, one of the main goals of this site is to raise awareness to others of the really awesome ecosystem products and data and resources that, that NOAA puts out. We also received a lot of feedback for improvements. Users wanted better explanations of the time series and the gauges. Um, they have ideas for new indicators to put on the site. And so this is definitely a living site and we continue to uh, improve it and welcome your feedback. So some of the groups that we worked with in developing this site and then also have awesomely reached out to us since launching the site is the Integrated Ecosystem Assessment Program that I mentioned earlier, the National Marine Sanctuaries, some of the regional planning bodies, the integrated ocean observing system, the marine biodiversity and observation network, the office for coastal management, and the U.S. Global Change Research Program, and potentially your group. 
like I said, this is a living site and we continue to take feedback and hope to improve the site. So if there's information that's missing, we definitely welcome that. Another thing that I've noticed after this site has launched is not only the collaboration coordination to improve what's displayed on this site, but just at a broader, higher level scale across the ecosystem, the programs that do ecosystem work within the agency. For example, the US Global Change Research Program is now working with our working group to use some of the, uh, to access some of the social and economic indicator data to put into their, their next report. And there's a variety of other examples of working with some of these groups and how we're collaborating and, and really trying to better coordinate NOAA's ecosystem enterprise. So how are we gonna keep this site up to, the, up to date? Pretty much in, the, in this digital age, the second you put something on the internet, it becomes old. So we're working on developing a plan to update and review the process for adding or potentially removing indicators using some of the criteria that I mentioned earlier and also new criteria. We plan on updating the site initially on an annual basis. We just recruited a new 2021 Canals Fellow, Will Claiborne. If you're listening, we're so excited to have you. He has a really awesome ecosystem science background as all the Canals Fellows do. And so he'll be working with the working group to lead that effort, what a tongue twister. Um, we also have a plan to maintain the back end of the website and update the, the functionality and the dynamic features of the site. You saw some of that when I clicked on the stylized ecosystem or when I clicked on uh, one of the regional pages. And we're also working on automating some of the data pulls. I actually just had a call with one of my colleagues who is helping this effort in a variety of our other programs using R scripts to pull data from ERDAP and a variety of other data sources so that we can have the most up-to-date data and uh, lessen the amount of work that's taken to keep these sites up to date. So we ask that you please get involved with our group. First of all, please peruse the web portal. Uh, check out your favorite region, your favorite indicator. If it's not there, let us know. Spread the word to any of your colleagues that you think this page might be relevant to. This site is not only meant for scientists within NOAA, but we hope that it can help educators, outreach specialists, um, a variety of different user groups become more aware of this site. And as I mentioned, please send your comments to nymphs.eiwg at noaa.gov. We'll respond to all of your comments there and make sure to put them in the queue when we begin updating the site next year. Like I said, if we missed any indicators, if there's new data sets, new web pages, resources, products, anything that we missed, um, we continue to, to welcome your feedback. And so with that, I want to give a huge thank you to the Ecosystem Indicator Working Group and specifically Scott Cross and his web development team. Without their efforts, the site would not look as amazing as it does and we would not be where we are. So I'm entirely grateful and to everybody on the working group. Uh, people volunteered their time from their day jobs to put this together. And I really hope that we can use this as a platform, not only to access uh, NOAA ecosystem sites, but really better coordinate NOAA's ecosystem enterprise in general. And so with that, I'll take any questions. Great, thank you so much, Ellen. Um, I wanted to encourage the audience to uh, you know, use this time to ask live questions. We have uh, lots of time to to do that. Um, also, as a reminder that we are recording this webinar, so um, I encourage you to share the link uh, with, with interested colleagues or watch the beginning of the presentation if you joined us late, um, and you, you'll be able to find the recording later today on the NOAA Central Library YouTube channel as well as the Library Seminars webpage. Uh, so far, no questions, but I'm going to give it a little time. Oh, we did great. We got one here. It says, hi, great resource. How is it different from HTTPS, uh, the integrated ecosystem assessment.gov? You know that site? Um, I think they're referring to the, the site, the other website that I um, help manage, the integrated ecosystem assessment website. And this site is different in that 
um, it's really meant to be a starting point to access all of NOAA's ecosystem data. Um, and it also has the, the national status. So um, the IEA program is making huge strides in advancing the agency's efforts towards ecosystem-based management, but we most certainly do not cover all of the ecosystem efforts. And so this site, for example, has links to, um, I'm trying to think, the ocean acidification program or uh, a variety of other efforts. So this site, provides a more broader access than the IA website does. I hope that addresses your question. Yes, uh, we just got another question that asks, could you reiterate the top three points from the beginning? Yeah, definitely. So actually, quicker way to this is, um, so it's meant to provide the status at a glance for seven regional marine ecosystems and the nation. And I want to emphasize at a glance because there are a variety of other programs that provide much more detailed uh, ecosystem status reports that are meant for more targeted resource managers or uh, stakeholder groups. So this is really just meant to help provide a, a, a logical way for displaying this information. And also importantly, it provides access to NOAA sites for deeper dives into the, the amount of resources, the different sites that provide ecosystem data, and then also check out the site and provide your feedback. Great. Uh, another question asked, do you already or do you plan to include biodiversity indicators? Yeah, actually, we just had a briefing earlier today with the Marine Biodiversity Observing Network and had a couple ideas for um, ways to better coordinate with them and uh, add some biodiversity indicators. So we don't have any right now, as you may have noticed, but it, it's definitely on our purview and in the queue to discuss. Awesome. Uh, next question says, you mentioned diving deeper. Can users access the underlying raw data? How is that done? Yeah, so to find the raw data that was used to develop the time series and the gauges, you should be able to access that by clicking on the individual indicator that you're interested in. Scroll down to the bottom where it says uh, resources. If that doesn't take you directly to the data, um, we're working on making sure that we can provide a more direct link to that, but that is the, the current place to find that information now. This, uh, this next uh, thing is a comment. It says, excellent presentation. For outreach and education with fishers and seafood consumers, this website is a jewel. Oh, yay. That's, it's, <laughs> I really appreciate uh, hearing how this site can be useful to others because it really helps us improve the site and get a better understanding for um, what end users are looking for. Uh, another compliment. Uh, thank you for your great introduction. Ellen touched upon it a bit, but just to clarify, who is the target audience for this? And question two, how many communication staff versus scientists did you have working on this project? Asking this as a person who works in communications. Yeah, there was one, well, there was two uh, communications individuals, myself and Bruce, uh, who worked on the site and the, the rest of the working group was scientists. Um, and to the, the previous question of who is the target audience for the site, it's not necessarily meant for a scientific audience, but more for the interested public um, sea Grant extension agents, uh, science teachers and educators, uh, educators at museums um, to help make other people more aware of the ecosystem data and services that NOAA provides. I know the library will definitely be looking at this, so thank you. Um, the next question mm -hmm. says, if the ecosystems you're featuring already have ecosystem status reports, are you using indicators generated by scientists working in or with those ecosystems, or are you recalculating from scratch? 
We are definitely working with uh, the experts in those regions to develop the time series and the gauges. Uh, for example, the, the code that was used to generate these time series were pulled from uh, the California Current Ecosystem Status Report that's, that's put together. Um, but if there are ones where you notice that it, they're not matching up, um, we can definitely work on fixing that. Another question. Can users access the summarized indicator that you show in the graphic? Can users, can you repeat the question? Sure. Can users access the summarized indicator that you show in the graphic? The summarized indicator? I mean, users can access um, the indicator data using the source at the bottom of the page. They can um, see that the time series and the gauges presented on the site. I'm not quite sure if I understand that question, but hopefully I address that. If not, um, feel free to email me and follow up. Absolutely. Um, so the next question asks, are any physical chemical indices planned for looking at features below surface, i.e. bottom temperature or cold pool? Oh, that's really interesting. Um, we definitely want to look more into the, the physical chemical indicators, some of the ones that we have in our purview right now were pH and dissolved oxygen. Um, but I think bottom temperature would really add, a, a, be a great addition to the site. Um, so I can add it to our, our list of indicators that we consider when updating. It's just, I'm glad you're getting good ideas from this. <laughs> Yeah, that, well, that was the point of this, was generate ideas, generate discussion, make the site better. <laughs> uh, the next question asks, what are you doing to get the word out about the site? Yeah, so this presentation is one example. Um, next week, the educator who I am collaborating with is giving a presentation to the Office of National Marine Sanctuary's team of educators. So we're kind of just tapping into all the different groups that I mentioned earlier and, and giving as many briefings or presentations as possible. Uh, when we initially launched the site, we also sent it out to a variety of different listservs. Uh, for example, NASA has a, a giant listserv of educators and teachers where they provide them with lesson plans. And so we sent out this announcement through that. Um, our own NOAA stewards listserv, this announcement went out. Um, the National Ocean Service website featured this page on their homepage for a little while. We shared it on social media. Um, yeah, a, a variety of different ways of getting it out. And now this way. <laughs> um, the next question says, you mentioned that the raw data is accessible, but is the code used to recreate the time series also accessible? Right now the code is not accessible, but we are definitely happy to share that with whoever is interested. And um, that's an interesting idea to make the code available on the site as well. I actually just saw, I'm gonna do a little plug for the Florida Keys uh, IEA just put out an ecosystem status report this past year. And on their website, they have a link to the code that they use. So um, that's a good idea. Next question asks, do you only have status on marine mammals or other ESA endangered threatened species? Right now, I believe that it was only marine mammals just because of uh, accessing the data and if it was available to a certain scale, um, but we're open to adding other in threatened and endangered species. Um, yeah. Uh, some of our, our experts that, that helped us get that information could provide a, a better answer than that, um, but I hope that generally addresses it. I have one last um, comment here. It says, great resource. Thank you for the introduction. Would Ellen and others connected with the project be available to speak with my undergraduate class in the spring? How best to I coordinate? Would love to. <laughs> yeah, I would love to do that. I love talking to kids in classrooms and um, teaching them about all the 
not only NOAA stuff, but just getting them excited about the ocean. So yeah, definitely email me. I would love to do that. Excellent. So we still have time for questions. Uh, and I encourage people to take a moment to uh, enter them. Um, this gentleman who asked about his undergraduate class just said, wonderful, and thank you. Um, hey. uh, we got a question, is the PDF of the slides available? Oh, man, Lisa asked me if I wanted to do that beforehand, and I was like, I don't think people will want it, but I stand corrected. Um, so we can definitely make a PDF of this presentation available. If, uh, if you are interested in the PDF, just uh, con either contact Ellen directly or contact library.seminars at noaa.gov, and I can also send it to you. Excellent. Uh, person says thank you. Mm -hmm. Any more questions about this incredible resource, which I can't wait to explore offline? <laughs> All right. Oh, we did get one more question. Will there be indicators of mangrove context uh, or seagrass data? Oh, um, we actually just had a discussion with a group on the West Coast, um, actually the West Coast Regional Planning Body, about getting a kelp indicator. Um, we, so we have not discussed sea, seagrass or mangroves, but I do feel like that would be um, a good indicator to add, just so long as we can get the data at the scale for which we're currently presenting the information. Um, so yeah, if you have resources for that sort of data, please send that along. Great. Well, looks like that, that might be our last question. Um, Peg or Ellen, do you have any last comments? Well, I just want to thank Ellen and her team, uh, the Ecosystem Indicator team and all the folks who worked on this. An excellent presentation, Ellen, and thanks again for all your efforts. and. There's obviously more opportunities to uh, share this. Um, and certainly it got a lot of attention on LinkedIn when we posted it. So uh, we had quite a number of uh, interested parties. So and thanks to you and thanks to everyone who joined us today. And please uh, let your colleagues know all about the series and also about our new web portal. So thanks, Lisa, I'll, I'll sign off. And Ellen, thank you. Thank you all. Yeah, and I also wanted to say just, it was really great having such a succinct introduction to this product. And I want to thank Peg for organizing the uh, seminar as well, because uh, this is a wonderful way to learn about new things at NOAA. Um, and to the audience, before I sign off, I want to thank you for joining us. Uh, NOAA Central Library is very proud to present the work of the NOAA community, its partners, and we hope you will join us again. So be well, everybody. Yeah, and Lisa, one more thing. Uh, stay tuned for our 2021 uh, schedule. Mm -hmm. So this will continue on into uh, the next year. So, and we'll be posting that. Thanks so much. Thank you. We'll see you next year, everybody. Have a wonderful holiday season. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy New Year. <laughs>